What's good y'all, it's Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out WWE matches with unexpected endings. This should be a good one. It's, I guess you could say sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes the unexpected endings to a match can be received with positive, you know, reaction. Like, oh damn, that was, that was a creative way to end the match. Or sometimes it could be like a, a lackluster reaction where you're like, hmm, that kind of fell flat. Especially if, depending on the feud, if the feud has been really intense, but the ending is kind of didn't live up, like it didn't have that that I guess grand grand crescendo moment or whatnot, then it can leave the fans, you know, wanting a little bit more or feeling disappointed or let down. So we're gonna check out some of the unexpected endings that have happened in wrestling matches in WWE. And let's go back down memory lane and, and kind of talk about and relive some of these moments when they initially happened. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into it, man. WWE matches had fans asking what just happened. Into the cover, the, leg, the, the most infamous one. One of them, at least, for sure. Look at that. Two of WWE's most colorful characters in the mid-2000s were Eugene and Simon Dean. That's why when they faced off, you knew something interesting was going to happen. Simon Dean's character was that of a workout infomercial personality. Uh -huh. As such, he always came to the ring with exercise equipment. For his match against Eugene, Simon brought out a resistance band that he placed on the ring post. Simon Dean tried to hold onto the band for safety, but this resulted in him catapulting himself <laughs> into the turnbuckle and allowing Eugene to get the win. The 2020 Extreme Rules paper was a weird show with a number of unusual matches. Yeah. However, Asuka's Raw Women's Talent Defense against Sasha Banks looked like it would be a solid, normal match. That was until it ended. Asuka attempted to spray Banks with a green mist, but accidentally <laughs> blinded the referee. Sasha's tag team partner, Bailey, then laid out Asuka and stripped the referee of his shirt. Bailey then counted the three count and had the bell run and awarded the championship to Sasha. That's not even legal, by the way. <laughs> That's. It's not legal. You can't just take off the ref shirt and then fucking put the ref shirt on and then pin someone. It's not legal. <laughs> I mean, CM Punk did it, so fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> Since when can someone just put on a black and white shirt and start calling the shots? Brock Lesnar is one of the most dominant WWE wrestlers of all time. The man rarely loses, and even when he does, it usually takes a lot to put him down. Look at that. <laughs> this is why what happened at Survivor Series in 2016 uh, was so shocking. Yeah. Prior to the show, Goldberg had made his long-awaited return to WWE. The last time fans saw Goldberg, he could beat against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 20. The match was something fans had dreamed of ever since Brock's debut, but unfortunately, the match didn't come close to living up to fans' expectations. Mm -mm. That's why once Goldberg returned 12 years later, it wasn't too big of a surprise that a rematch is made between these two icons. The last time they locked up, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg fought for over 13 minutes, with Goldberg getting the win over Lesnar. However, at the 2016 Survivor Series, something much different happened. This was a Goldberg crazy moment. To the floor, this is such a crazy one, moment. Two spears, then the jackhammer for the pinfall the... victory. Brock didn't hit a single offensive move. That shit was shocking. I'm not gonna lie to you, that was one of the shocking ways to ever end the show. Ever in a pay-per-view where people was like, what the fuck did we just see? Brock just got squashed. And it worked. It worked. It was quick, straight to the point, shocked everybody. That was a crazy moment. Watching that live, I, I was like, what the fuck did I just see? Move, and he was being clean in 86 seconds. Fans weren't exactly sure how Goldberg would perform in his first match in over a decade, but nobody expected this. Joint the Clown vs. Crush should have been a pretty forgettable match, and it mostly was, except for the ending. While fighting, the referee accidentally got knocked out. Of Crush course. stayed on top until a second doink entered the <laughs> ring and aided the first clown. <laughs> the two clowns locked eyes, laughed, and proved this wasn't a magic trick. The second doink exited the ring just as the referee was coming to, allowing the original clown to get an easy victory. <laughs> this is the stupidest ending to a WWE match ever. In October 2019, Seth Rollins uh, fought the in a Hell in a Cell match. The and like I said, sometimes the endings of a match can just lead the fans either wanting more or disappointed. And this will go down as one of the worst Hell in a Cell matches of all time. First and foremost, the red lighting destroys this. You can barely see anything. That's one. Two, they booked themselves in a corner with this new character in The Fiend that you knew wasn't going to lose. How many curb stomps did this nigga hit? 
How many curb stomps did Seth Rollins hit on the Fiend? It was a ridiculous amount. And he was just kept getting back up. Third, the match was ended on a, a ref stoppage. It's a hell in a cell. No ref should be stopping the match. It's a hell in a cell. And then none of it mattered because guess what? Seth Rollins got attacked right at the end of it. This was awful. One of the worst Hell in a Cells of all time. Awful. Two competed in the main event with the entire match bathed in red light. However, that was not what fans hated. After going at it for a while, Rollins hit his finisher, the stop, but ended up hitting five more, as well as a pedigree. In wrestling logic, hitting seven finishers should get you the win. Yeah, and ridiculous maybe amount. Your opponent. However, after all that, The Fiend still kicked out at one. Rollins had hit five more stops and even started using weapons, yes. but got another one count. Yes. Despite the craziness of hitting multiple finishers <laughs> and The Fiend still kicking out, nobody expected the ending. Rollins eventually pulled a sledgehammer out to try and put the Masked Menace away. While this was a Hell in a Cell match, the referee still called for the bell after Rollins used the sledgehammer and ended the match. This clip sums it up best. You may not ask me back for another one of these, but how the hell do you get DQ in the hell did, did he in get the DQ'd the stop cell? The match? <laughs> Wait a minute. We got to listen to that one more time. Xbox had it. He had it right, man. Xbox you may had not it right. ask me back for another one of these, but how the hell do you get... He said, you may not ask me back for one of these, but how the hell do you get DQ'd? <laughs> the sale. <laughs> that was so stupid. Oh my God, man! We appreciate you for saying that. DQ now. Did, did he get DQ to the cell? At Backlash 2017, the United States Champion Kevin Owens had a tough challenge ahead of him. Oh, he man. only his title against AJ Styles. Owens, though, used both the rules and the environment to his advantage. <laughs> While fighting on the announcer's table, Kevin Owens swiped at AJ. I to remember to this, to yeah. And get tangled in wires. AJ yep. was unable to get back into the ring, causing yep. him to get counted out, and for Kevin Owens to win the match and retain the gold. Money in the bank. That was a creative way. It's, it's rare that you see a creative finish where you're like, okay, that was creative. He couldn't get to he couldn't get to the referee. He couldn't get back in there. His foot was caught. That was creative. Very creative. I like that finish. Bank was made to create unexpected moments. Whether it be crazy cash-ins, like when Seth Rollins ran in during the main event of WrestleMania 31 and won the WWE Championship, or during the actual Money in the Bank ladder match itself, like in 2019, when Brock Lesnar entered at the last minute and won the briefcase. However, one of the oddest ways that wrestler won Money in the Bank happened during one of the oddest years in WWE history. The 2020 Money in the Bank match took place inside WWE oh, headquarters, yeah. and wrestlers had to go to the roof of the building in order to win. Otis was one of the participants, but when mm -hmm. it came time to climb the ladder, the big man was having some trouble. It ended up not being an issue, as when Baron Corbin and AJ Styles were fighting on top of the ladder, the briefcase fell and landed in Otis's hands. Money might not grow on trees, yeah. but it can fall right into you. For those who don't know, I never watched this match in its entirety. I didn't care. I, I just didn't care. I did not care. I remember seeing the clip of fucking, I think Ray got thrown off the building. I don't know how he survived. <laughs> but I do remember seeing that clip of Ray being murdered <laughs> by getting thrown off the top of the building. So, whatever. <laughs> to your hands. A triple threat match on Raw saw Mustafa Ali versus AJ Styles versus The Miz. To close things out, Ali hit a 450 splash, which AJ then transitioned mm -hmm. into a it's Styles a splash, splash to yeah. get the W. That was tough. There's simply only one word to describe this. Awesome. That was Almost tough. Almost a year after their legendary WrestleMania match, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant went at it again. Hogan was still the WWE Champion, raising the stakes even more. However, and that was sell the WWE title. The buyer was oh, the yeah. man, Ted DiBiase, <laughs> yep. but it gets even stranger. After the sale, an identical looking referee ran to the ring and confronted the other referee. It turned out the corrupted referee was Earl Hebner and the real referee was his identical twin, Dave Hebner. Hogan though, didn't seem to care and both referees <laughs> had a rough night. It's always cool when wrestlers <laughs> find unique ways to win matches and yep. Kofi Kingston was using his thinking cap when he fought Dolph Ziggler in a steel cage match. Throughout the match, Kofi made multiple attempts to escape the cage, but but Ziggler always thwarted them. However, after Ziggler nailed Kofi in the face with his boots, it looked like the show-off had the match won. 
Then, at the last possible moment, yep. Kingston leaped over that was tough. and out of the cage. That was For tough. For real, Kingston's feet touched the ground two seconds before Dolph's did. But that didn't matter. Kofi Kingston was literally leaps and bounds above Dolph Ziggler. Nah, that was, that was a tough finish, too. This is the oddest way someone lost a match in WWE history. In his third WrestleMania match, he <laughs> fought Giant Gonzalez. Even though Gonzalez was taller the than the body suit, the is wild. resorted to dirty tactics. While distracting the referee, Giant Gonzalez's manager threw a towel soaked in chloroform into the ring. Yep. Gonzalez then smothered the Undertaker with it, and eventually, the referee was forced to rule the match a disqualification. Mm -hmm. I told you this is the oddest way someone lost a WWE match. WWE matches in 1993 had some really bizarre endings. During the 1993 Royal Rumble, oh, he came down to Yokozuna and the Macho Man, Randy Savage. For some reason, after hitting a signature elbow drop, Macho Man decided to go for a pin. Obviously, yeah. there are no pinfalls in the Royal Rumble, and Savage should have known this since uh -huh. he had just eliminated someone a few minutes earlier. Making matters worse, Yokozuna launched Randy Savage over the top rope, allowing the 500-plus pound wrestler to win the entire match. Dude, yeah, that's, that's why it's just like they, they wrote themselves in a corner in order to sell the idea of him kicking out and launching him over the top rope. You had him go for a pin that made no sense to go for a pin in a Royal Rumble match. You see, what, see that made no sense. It wasn't a good ending, but it was unexpected. At the 2013 Royal Rumble pay-per-view, CM Punk walked in with a 434-day WWE Championship reign. However, Punk was arguably about to face his greatest challenger yet, The Rock. Despite Punk's best efforts, the Great One was closing in on the win. But then, the lights went out, and when they came back, The Rock had been put through a table. Mm -hmm. Even without seeing it, it was clear the attack was orchestrated by The Shield, yep. who had working with CM Punk. The match was ultimately restarted, and this time, there was no escape for Punk. That wasn't the unexpected part, though. What was unexpected was that the move that ended CM Punk's historic WWE Championship reign was a measly people's elbow. <laughs> it's a cool move, but yeah. it looks weak. With a title reign as long as CM Punk's, that's a fair it point. Some huge move or big finish to end his reign, but nope. Literally nobody could have expected what happened at SummerSlam 2021. Bianca Belair was scheduled to defend her SmackDown uh... Championship against Sasha Banks, a rematch from WrestleMania 37. However, minutes before the match, it was announced that Sasha hadn't been medically cleared. Therefore, Carmella had become the new challenger. However, seconds before that match started, Becky Lynch returned. Mm -hmm. Lynch then took Carmella out and became the new new challenger for Belair's <laughs> title. And what's even crazier than all that was that it only <laughs> took Becky Lynch 26 seconds to defeat Bianca and become the new women's. Yeah, that that was that that was all Vince, all Vince. So stupid, made no sense. But Becky did the job for Bianca in the end of it. So kudos to Becky, man, because that that was that that's dumb. That was dumb. <laughs> Champion. I told you, nobody expected this to happen. Legs are a pretty good weapon in wrestling. You only need to see a super kick to understand why. Mm -hmm. However, when Diesel and Shawn Michaels faced off in a WWE Championship match, they used a different kind of leg. At the event, WWE legend Mad Dog Vashon was sitting in the front row enjoying the show. In real life, Mad Dog had one of his legs amputated after getting hit by a car. Damn. This would become important during Michaels and Diesel's match. Diesel got fed up and decided to grab Vashon and ripped off the wrestling legend's wow. leg. Diesel's plan ended up backfiring as Shawn Michaels grabbed the leg and nailed his opponent <laughs> in the face. HBK then got the win, all thanks to Mad Dog lending a leg. Usually, after a wrestler hits the finisher, they go for the pin. That's not what Kane did in this next match. In 2015, Kane was unmasked and working for the Authority. He got yeah. put into a match against Seth Rollins that Rollins needed to win so he could choose the match stipulation for his upcoming title defense. The plan was for Kane to lie down and let Rollins get the easy win. Mm -hmm. However, Kane couldn't bring himself to do it and gave Seth a choke slam. But after that, business took over mm -hmm. and the big red machine had Rollins cover him, so the architect got the win. At least Seth Rollins sold the choke slam because not everyone does. To see wrestlers no self finishers, watch this. Thing. Yeah, man, I remember that. Uh, corporate Kane, ugh, ugh, that shit was ugh. The Authority storyline had some good stuff because you really hated Triple H and you really hated Stephanie. They did a good job, but it became so redundant because every Monday Night Raw started with a 20 minute segment from these guys. And it's like you can have good heel heat. But then they were starting to get get off my TV heat because you're starting every show with you guys fucking talking. We don't care. 
every show it was the authority talking in some form or fashion it, it kind of got redundant and then corporate came he, he, it's, it's, it's corporate came that's all i need to say comment down below let me know some other unexpected endings that you guys remember whether it was good and you was like man that was a great way to end the show or a great way to end the match or it was awful where you was like yo this is not good at all why did they end this match like this if it wasn't listed in this video appreciate all love and support y'all have shown on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace